Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a little bit of market analysis focused in on Tesla, which was up 10% on the day yesterday. Now, the specific reason for this jump was an analyst note by Morgan Stanley that suggested that Tesla's Dojo supercomputer could have a huge impact on Tesla's market value. Specifically, they predicted a $600 billion increase in Tesla's value based on Dojo. Said Morgan Stanley analyst, Dojo can open up new addressable markets that, quote, extend well beyond selling vehicles at a fixed price. If Dojo can help make cars see and react, what other markets could open up? Think of any device at the edge with a camera that makes real-time decisions based on its visual field. Now, this perhaps lends a little bit of credence to ARK's Kathy Wood's comments from earlier in the year that, quote, Tesla is the biggest AI play out there. Alexandros Marinos also wrote an interesting post on Twitter slash X about exactly this. He writes, let me explain why Tesla is dominating the real world AI game. Tesla has taken a drastically different approach to autonomy than everyone else. They have invested a lot more in compute, with Tesla designed AI chips both on car and in cloud, making the sensor suite far cheaper, no LiDAR. As a result, they have the full sensor suite in almost every one of the million cars they have made annotated with human driver input. Nobody else has anything resembling such a data collection network. As such, they are building a real-world foundation model that they can then move to their robots, which will kickstart a whole other S-curve, first in their factories and mines, and eventually in a whole host of dangerous and grueling occupations. What's more, as Tesla makes leaps and bounds, many others will fail to follow and give up. The gap will widen because Tesla can embody their AI far cheaper than anybody else. They are already working on a car that will cost them less than 20k to make, probably closer to 10k. The robot will similarly be extremely low cost. And the more they sell, the more data they get, the better their foundation model will get, and the more tasks their robots will be able to do reliably. Remember, OpenAI gave up on robotics because they didn't have enough data. The combination of training lead and manufacturing lead, which will also mutually amplify with the bot, makes it nearly impossible for any competitor to come close. Tesla will license their software to others not because they want to make money, but to prevent regulatory scrutiny. Already, another car manufacturer is negotiating to get the Tesla autopilot in their cars. Tesla can become both the Android and the Apple of real-world AI. Now, one last note on markets. Tesla was not the only company to perform well surrounding AI. After the Wall Street Journal confirmed rumors that had been swirling on Twitter and X that Meta was working on a new, more powerful model to rival GPT-4, their stock jumped a little over 3% yesterday as well. Next up, you'll remember that a few weeks ago, the White House extracted voluntary pledges from seven big tech companies around responsible AI development. The initial signatories included companies like OpenAI, Microsoft, and Google. As of today, a new cohort have joined them, bringing the total number of companies that have taken on the voluntary commitments to 15. The new pledges include AI chip giant NVIDIA, government data-focused Palantir, Stability AI, Adobe, Cohere, Scale AI, and Salesforce. Now, there is a lot going on with AI in Washington this week. Later today, the White House Chief of Staff plans to meet with several of these companies. And then tomorrow, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is hosting a closed-door session that will feature basically every big tech CEO participating. On top of that, Senator Richard Blumenthal and Senator Josh Hawley are today expected to unveil comprehensive AI legislation. And so it seems like we will be spending some time in the District of Columbia this week. And as if to put a fine point on why clarity is needed around the AI rules of the road, Yet another class action lawsuit has been filed by writers against an AI platform, in this case, once again, OpenAI, for infringing upon their copyright by unlawfully training their AI systems on their copyrighted books. The plaintiffs in this case include the extremely prominent writer Michael Chabon. Ultimately, all of these lawsuits are trying to establish precedent and could be very significant in how the AI field develops depending on their resolution. Speaking of LLMs and controversy... One of the big questions surrounding LLMs is the role of human involvement in training the models, specifically the often lower cost Global South labor that's used to help label data, as well as to review potentially controversial or explicit content. We've talked before about the controversy of a number of Kenyans who had an extremely negative experience working with OpenAI, but now Wired has written about a new program in Finland where prisoners are being used to help train AI. The Wired piece presents this in surprisingly optimistic terms, but also does note that it may only work as such in a country like Finland that has an extremely progressive and rehabilitation-focused prison system. Now, wrapping up with a little bit of a product update today, 
Last year around this time, tools like Midjourney and Stable Diffusion were only barely becoming usable. Of course, over the subsequent year, AI image generation tools have made leaps and bounds. Now many are wondering if text-to-video is in a similar spot to where text-to-image was 12 to 18 months ago, and it seems like every day we get some exciting new feature showing the future of AI-generated video. This week it was a set of new features from Pika Labs, which include a number of new parameters for zooming and panning. These immediately give creations with Pika Labs a much more cinematic quality, where people can actually articulate a vision for a shot as though they were a director. The feature is basically hours old at this point, but there are already dozens of examples of people using it with much efficacy on Twitter. Now this follows a new feature from Pika Competitor Runway about a week and a half ago, which similarly gave users the ability to change the intensity of the motion in their video. Javi Lopez writes, another step closer to the future of AI in filmmaking. I truly believe that in the next five to ten years, we'll be able to create film scenes indistinguishable from reality. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching, and I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.